50 years ago, the moon was at the center of the Cold War. America was in a space race with the Russians. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Lives were lost as NASA tested new technology. Victory took extraordinary human endeavor and a perilous descent to the lunar surface. Mark, T-minus 10 minutes and counting, T-minus 10. We're aiming for our planned liftoff at 32 minutes past the hour. This is Kennedy Launch Control. I think you have to take risks in exploration. Would we take the same level of risk now as they did back then? Probably not. They decided a long time they were going to do it. Now's the day that they just got to get through that stage. Actually, they'd have probably rather the world wasn't watching them. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. You're, you're just getting on with what you need to do. And the main thing is, I don't want to trip up in front of all the, these people watching. I then walk in a line and I've got to wave to the cameras there and I've got to get my boots up on these steps to get into the bus. So you're just getting on with that thing. And although it's mundane because you're just, you're just walking in a spacesuit, you're just aware that the world's watching you. And the astronauts, launch operations manager Paul Donnelly, wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. It's lumpy and bumpy during the launch. You can't, um, uh, you, you can never really experience that in a simulator. Okay, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, that's that in, gave us a magnificent ride. Uh, Roger, 11, we'll pass that on, and it certainly looks like you're well on your way now. Boosters are jettisoned. You get the central core that's jettisoned, and then there's a split second before the next stage kicks in. So you get this kind of jerky um, launch profile. And you hear the bangs. 11, Houston, thrusters go, all engines, you're looking good. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. Reaching 25,000 miles an hour, the Saturn V rocket propelled Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins towards the moon. A three-day journey in zero gravity. Feeling weightless is the most I mean, natural, relaxing feeling you can imagine. I just forgot what it's like to sit down or to stand up. Um, it just is so natural. Um, it's as though we've, we've been born in space. Looking out of the window and going, hey, you know, that's pretty cool. I'm really here. This is absolutely fantastic. That would have been an amazing sight. For Neil and Buzz, it would be a fraught 13 minute descent to the surface in the lunar lander, codenamed Eagle. Michael Collins orbited the moon alone, hoping for their safe return. 
Hot fire. Okay, all flight controllers going around the horn. Go, no, go for undocking. Okay, retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guide. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for undocking. Okay, we're off to a good start, plate. Cool. He thinks they're a little long downrange. That's right. I think we confirm that. We confirm that. Roger. Then the flight computer the crew depended on had a meltdown. Overloaded by data, it sounded an error code that left everyone scratching their heads. 12, 12.02 alarm. Yeah, the same thing we had. Flight, retro. Go retro. Throttle down, 6 plus 2.5. Give us a reading on the 12.02 program we're, alarm. We're going that flight. We're going that alarm. Roger, we got you. We're going that alarm. Roger. He's, he's taking in his off H now. Roger. I think that's when he's getting it. Okay. Eagle Houston will monitor your Delta and please. Roger. I think this is one that they hadn't actually rehearsed before. They weren't really ready for this particular alarm. And you could see in mission control, you could hear in mission control, that they were trying to um, logically work through all well, it, it seems to happen when we've got this particular thing. But just as they solved one problem, they encountered another. Eagle was running dangerously low on fuel. Okay, everybody, hang tight. Seven and a half minutes. Descent to fuel crit. Descent to fuel only. No fuel. critical. He didn't want to say critical. I think the fuel was kind of sloshing about a bit, wasn't it? So uh, they, they were, the sensors weren't necessarily giving the, 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 an accurate reading. You do have to rely to a certain point on, on what, what information you're being given. Um, and you know that if, it, if it's wrong, you know, the bottom line is you will die. Overall, they thought the probability of success was maybe 50-50 and that tremendous risk of the landing, the first landing, the alarm, the computer alarms going off, all of these uh, moments of uh, excitement, maybe nervousness back in uh, mission control, but yet Buzz and Neil, they just seem incredibly calm through it all. 33 degrees, 30 rock area, 600 feet down at 19. Just that bit about physically seeing um, a certain part of the moon's surface and deciding no, no, um, that's a bit rocky. I'm going to go somewhere else. We've heard from um, Mission Control how they were m looking at the, their heart rates and so on, and uh, Armstrong's heart rate was higher than Aldrin's, I think, um, during this landing stage. So, yeah, um, Armstrong was just so desperate to get this right, but equally not wanting to rush it. Feet, three and a half down, nine forward. There's now just a minute's worth of fuel left in the tank. Six forward, 60 seconds. Lights on, forward, forward. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Straight shadow. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. They made it with just 18 seconds to spare. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Little surprise that Neil and Buzz couldn't sleep as planned and instead immediately prepared to take their historic steps on the moon. Okay, I just checked, uh, getting back up to that first step, uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but, uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. Last step was about three and a half feet from the surface, uh, and, uh, we're somewhat concerned that uh, we might have difficulty in, in re-entering the limb at the end of our activity period, so we practiced. Uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Mount mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yes. 
small step for man, un pequeño paso para one giant leap for mankind. Para la Both hands down about the fourth rung up. There you go. Welcome home. And now we have two Americans on the moon. Beautiful view. Is that something? Magnificent flight out here. Magnificent desolation. I remember seeing those images. I didn't really understand the magnitude of the event until I was older. I do remember thinking, I want to be just like them. So many people have done so much to give us this opportunity to place this American flag on the surface. To me, it was one of the prouder moments of my life. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. Oh, it's beautiful, Mike, it really is. Oh, gee, that's great. So-called kangaroo hop. It does work, but it seems so your forward stability is not quite as good. It would uh, get rather tiring after several hundred uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. That would be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are. Of and as you talk to us from the Sea of Tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. It's an extraordinary moment which brought the world together. And I think we, we don't have so many of those moments. And I think uh, we have to reflect on that and think about that and dream of the future. We shouldn't just stop because we've reached the moon. There's always a next step, a next goal that we can achieve. I hope that my generation and uh, younger people will have our own Apollo 11 moments and maybe see uh, the first person step on the uh, Martian surface. Mars, and perhaps one day beyond, but Apollo 11 will remain one of the most significant events in human history, the first time we stepped onto an alien world.